Hi there. So while I was editing my planner cover video, I noticed a few things that I missed out. I also have a couple more suggestions. So part two, I am just elaborating on things from part one. There is something that I feel is extremely important that I did not mention in my original video. I think I started doing the planning in like 2015, 2016. So this is probably six years old or so. But back then, the reason I bought this and I did not buy the Happy Planner, like they had the pink, they have a pink one and a blue one, was because they would not, make that very clear, they did not five or six years ago, punch through plastic. And the plastic actually got stuck. And I do not want anybody ruining their planner punches. I do not, again, I want to be very clear, I do not know if you go to the store today and buy one, if it will punch plastic. Read the boxes. I believe on the boxes, it tells you what it will punch through. And if anybody has tried it, post in the comments. Let everybody know whether it works or not, especially if it doesn't work. Okay, please, please post in the comments so that everybody knows whether it works or not. So the first thing that I noticed was that I did not mention the big does not fit the file folders. This one here fits, but with the holes, if you moved your, so you're not getting the holes in, it is now doesn't fit. So that was one of the first things I noticed. So a suggestion that I wanted to do was when you are, say, tracing out something on specifically like the plastic, not every pen works. So you may need to use a uh, Sharpie or a marker and you don't want to use a Sharpie or a marker with your actual Happy Planner cover because you're gonna end up with black ink all the way around. So my first suggestion is to make a template. So this template is made from a Honey Nut Cheerio cereal box. And then this was like a single pack, so they're like only a single box so it's very small so I ended up having that fold and I just added in some deco tape or washi tape in to kind of strengthen that fold which leads me to the sec this what the second thing I noticed I guess I was talking about deco tape deco tape is um, plasticky where washi tape is like more paper-like. So washi tape is like masking tape or painter's tape. It is thinner. Um, it will rip very easily. The deco tape is more of a plastic coated tape. Now, you can get washi tape, the actual washi tape at Michael's, Joann's, and uh, Hobby Lobby. Uh, the deco tape, I am finding that the deco tape at Dollar Tree and dollar stores. So that was the one thing I wanted to mention. If anybody was wondering, you can get uh, this deco tape at the dollar stores. Okay, so back to the template. So yeah, I just put on some tape just to strengthen it a little so it wouldn't fold. 
that is a very easy, simple thing to do. You can use a pencil on the cardboard to trace your, your cover out. So just use pencil going all the way around. Doesn't wreck your, your uh, Happy Planner cover. There is one thing though. So we were making these cover protectors in the first video. I do suggest using or making yourself a plastic one from, and you only need, you only need one. You don't need one for the front and the back because they're the same size. I, but I do suggest making one from the Dollar Tree chopping mats. Oh, and by the way, I went on the DollarTree.com website. So those chopping mats are on the website. So I am just going to assume that you can still get them in the store. And if you've noticed, I put a picture of what it looks like on the website. Okay, so back to the template. I suggest the plastic one, it is gonna last longer, but my main suggestion for the plastic one is you can see through it. So if you have a print, and let's say, I'm gonna use the plastic one so you can see. So you see here, I want this big camera, and I want this camera, so I want the whole picture of the camera. So I can move this around, Right, I can move this around and I can find exactly where I want to trace, trace this out with a Sharpie, because it doesn't matter if your template gets black lines on it. You can you take your Honey Nut Cheerios template, you can't see. You can still do it though. So I know that uh, you can do it a couple of ways. You can just measure out your planner size, which I do have the measurements, and I'll, I'm going to post them towards the end. You can measure it out and find your where you want to cut it. I and mean, you can go, okay, so this is my center. So center there, I can look. Lift it up. Oh, I see this camera. I kind of like that camera. Can I get that camera in? Lift it up. Okay, cameras are in there. Camera in there. Okay, trace. So, but my suggestion is for a dollar twenty-five American or a dollar fifty Canadian, you can easily make yourself a template. So the one thing I didn't mention is other size planners. So this was the big protector and you don't have enough left over to make anything else. But with the classic, you have more than enough room to do the mini planner or the skinny planner, which is taller and taller and skinnier. I don't own one of those. So don't throw away your, like your extra piece here, because you can make a protector for your mini or for your skinny with the one sheet. So there was something that I was thinking when I was editing. And I was wondering, do you need to actually have a hole, your first hole punched in order to get, you know, go one, two, three, four, five. So I thought, let's just try something here. And this, this leads me to another thing that I had noticed with the plastic. Okay, so I'm just going to trace some of these holes out. And if you remember when I was punching the holes, I didn't punch all the holes perfectly. But, okay, 
So this is just a plain old, just a plain old black marker. Okay, so here's my thought. Open that up. Oh, and I got this at Michael's. I am pretty sure Joanne's and Hobby Lobby carries them. You'd have to just check when you in, when you go in there. However, there are two or three or four other punches that look very similar to these, like just a, a whole regular hole punch and, and some other things. So make sure to check the packaging and to check that it has this piece here. So you don't get them mixed up and then have to go and return it and get completely disappointed. Okay, so my thought with this is, do you need to have the hole punched in it in order to do this? So what I'm doing with this clear plastic is I've got my black mark. So you got the black mark. I'm just putting the black mark on top and punching. And look at that, it works. So you see this, okay, so here, is my black hole. So look at this one right here. You can see I've got the black ink there. So if I line this one up, the black ink is now gone. So it works. You do not have to have your first hole punched in order to do, do your template or to do any, well, to do, punch any kind of holes in anything with this. And now I'm just gonna flip it over and show you. So normally you put the hole, so you've got your hole. It goes in there and it sticks in there and it'll punch it out, okay? That was the one thing I wanted to try and it works. All right, so I mentioned cutting with a razor knife. This is what I'm talking about. Well, you can get these razor knives. You can get a razor knife at Dollar Tree. So on this plastic sheet, I was wondering if I just use the plain old black Dollar Tree marker, will it come off the plastic? And yes, it does. It's gone. There's no marks, so you may want to take like a piece of scrap and test your marker first. So this is that plain old black marker. This is a Sharpie. This is a very worn down Sharpie. Pen, just the pen right. Uh, you can kind of see the pen. So what comes off? This is just a damp, like I put a little bit of water on here. The pen does not come off. The Sharpie does not come off. The black marker does with just a paper towel and a little bit of water. Another thing I mentioned were corner punches. And I mentioned my blue Creative Memories uh, corner punch and I said that it cut through the plastic well apparently menopause brain does doesn't work because it will not so it may be my punch it may not be but see that did not work but it does leave like a little kind of crease a little mark so you can easily follow the little mark around Okay, so I had mentioned the corner punches because uh, a lot of scrapbook people will have corner punches. And so if you are a scrapbook person who also does planning, then you probably have a corner punch and that's why I mentioned them. So these two punches here are from EK Success and they are two different sizes. I've got a one inch and a half inch. And if you can see without light shining on it, this one has a sharper corner. This one has a softer corner. So I'll just show you. And when you're using corner punches, make sure you get your paper all the way in there. This is the half inch here. It's got a small 
curve and this is the one inch here which has a longer curve uh, they kind of work sometimes work on plastic yep. the one inch i found was hard and gets stuck so so yeah they're not good for the plastic Oh, there it just popped. The half inch, for some reason, works fine. So I guess it's because it's not, it's just cutting the little corner off where the one inch is cutting a bigger chunk off. So anyways, that's what I wanted to mention is that this Creative Memories punch doesn't always work. It sometimes works. I said that it worked, but... Yeah, like I can't get it to work again. And then there are other punches. However, you don't need to go and buy any of these, especially when they don't work every time. Like you're better off just taking your, I'm gonna use my template cause I haven't, I haven't done the corners on this temp, on the Honey Nut Cheerios template. So you can take any bottle and you can't see that. Let me flip that around maybe five more times. I'll figure this out. Okay, so you just take a little bottle, take a pen or whatever. Do I'm not left-handed. So yeah, right? Take your little bottle, do a line and then just cut it out for a curve. That's if you don't ha already have a happy planner and you're starting from scratch, that's what you can do. I mean, if you already have your happy planner, you can, when you go to trace it out all the way around, you'll end up with your little corner. So just snip it off. Okay. Another thing I realized is you don't have to make just covers. You can make your dividers. So if you wanna make some clear dividers using, using the chopping mat, um, first thing I would do is make a template because if you take your divider, unless it's a divider that you don't wanna use again, but or an old one that's already been used. Take a pencil, go around, oops, see look at that, I just wrote right across my divider so it's a good thing it's a pencil. Okay, so, now I have a template drawn out in pencil. So then this is all just scrap paper I'm using at the moment. You can make your template out of everything, anything. So I'm pretending I'm cutting this nice. <laughs> okay. So you would cut it out. So now I can take this. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to make dividers. But now I can take my template, put it down on my clear plastic, take a Sharpie and trace out the divider onto the plastic and I don't have to worry about, oops, see, look at that. I did a black line right across. I don't have to worry about getting ink on my dividers. You can put your tab pretty much anywhere you want. So you take your pencil, go around. Don't not, don't go around the tab though. So just go around.
Yeah, I know that's not a good line, but okay, so. I'm gonna just do this in quickly in ink here so you can see it a bit better. Okay, so I had the tab. This is where the tab was, right? Because that was December. Well, I don't want my tab there, so you can obviously flip it over and you can draw your tab in here. Or, can you see that? See, so you can drop your tab in there. Or you can just move it over Draw a tab there. Move it over. Draw a tab there. Move it over. So you know what it is. So you can put your tabs wherever you want. The other thing you can do, let's say you want to have your tabs at the top. Take your paper, well, you probably want your tab over here. Yeah, this is going to have your holes in it. Let me use this. Okay, right? You're, so your holes are going to be here. So you, yeah, you don't want your tab where the holes are. But you could take your divider, your divider and a pencil, and you can just draw out a tab on the top. You can probably get, what, three of them on the top? Let's see. Yeah, for the most part, you can get three tabs going across the top if you measure it out properly. This isn't measured out properly. This is just, I'm just doing a sample. Okay, so can you see that? I'll do it in pen here so you can see. So you can get one, two, three tabs in the top. Now, if you wanted to do dividers for the big, I just wanted to show you, you have more than enough room to do the tabs. However, there is one thing I wanted to mention. I have been made any dividers. I don't use any kind of a divider in my book. I've only used the cover protectors and this is my cover protector which you can see it's dirty, it's scratched and so it's worked. But I put this cover protector on in April and I just took it off this week so I am not removing it and putting it back on a lot. It basically goes on once or twice a year. So if you were making dividers and you were taking them off and putting them on every month, I do not know how long they will last. Um, like this is flexible, but it is only a Dollar Tree product. So maybe it will crack. I do not know. So I just wanted everyone to be aware. If you're taking these off and on, over and over again, like every month, every couple weeks, every week. I do not know how long they will last. Another re thing I realized I was doing is I kept saying cardstock, but if you're not a scrapbooker, you may not know what cardstock is. So cardstock is just a very thick, nice, sturdy paper that we use in scrapbooking. And it comes in, like this one here is, I don't know if you can tell, but it's kind of got a texture to it. This one here is just plain smooth white. This one here is a lot soft, uh, thinner than this one. It also comes, so it comes in like every color you can think of. And it, this is an eight and a half by 11. So your regular size printer paper. So that eight and a half by 11, or it comes, this big pink one is a 12 by 12. 
So this big pink one I just wanted to show you, it is shiny. So you can get, you can get a lot of different uh, colors in, and sizes. I do want to note though, that if you are just going to make a cardstock cover using just the cardstock paper, you don't need, there's no point in buying the 12 by 12 because you can't get two of them. Buy the eight and a half by 11, which is perfect size. And I should mention that Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby all sells single sheets of this paper. I want to say the smaller ones are like 40 or 50 cents. And then the bigger ones are in the States, that is. And I want to say they were like 80 or 90 cents each. However, all three stores will put their paper on sale, especially Hobby Lobby. I find Hobby Lobby has their papers on sale all the time. Okay, so that's cardstock. It is much thicker than printer paper. It's much thicker and sturdier than notebook paper. Like that's what cardstock is. And then I had mentioned you can get different, different colors and stuff. So here is a Christmas one. Here is just a obvious cactus one. Here's a Halloween one. And these ones here are one-sided. You can get a double-sided sheet of scrapbook paper. Now, there is a difference again in paper. So this paper is very thin. This paper here is thicker. And then, and then this one here is even thicker yet. You can get packs of paper. This one here has got the one, two, three, four, five colors. It's 50 sheets, 50 sheets. So that's like 25 covers. So I, if, unless you're planning on making a ton of covers, I don't recommend getting a whole package unless you can find something that's really, really inexpensive. I would just buy, I think you can get these for like three for a dollar on sale, sometimes even more than that, four for a dollar. So this, unless you want to use it, but, 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 if you did buy one of these, you can use this paper in your planner. So just, I'm just gonna use this white sheet here. You can make, you can do little rips in there. So now you have yourself a little ripped corner that you can, that you can use and put like a box on top. Okay, you can rip yourself or you can cut yourself a straight line, like cut a straight line. I'm just gonna rip it because I... Okay, so now you have a fun, this one here. Oh, sorry about the ring lights. I can't do much when it's plastic. Here, let's get rid of the plastic. Okay. If I had a planner page here, that would be helpful too. So you can do border, a full border with the extra paper. You can cut squares, cut yourself boxes and write in the boxes or cut yourself bigger boxes and put your sticker box inside. Anyways, I'm going on, that's going on to a whole nother video, I think. <laughs> so the one thing I did want to just show you, so I had showed you this um, sports sticker. It's the wall sticker from Dollar Tree. Well, I, I had, this is an idea. So on the bottom of this, it's got some hockey stickers. You can get paper. This is ice. 
So this is the skating scratches and stuff idea for ice. You can get like green grass. So if you had green grass, you can do your football. You can even get like the football field where it's got like the white lines and the yard marks. So same with basketball. I believe you can get like a basketball court paper, soccer, green field or, or green grass with the soccer ball. So in my case, wouldn't it be cool? I, I only have the, these Winnipeg Jets. They're only small ones. But if I had a big Winnipeg Jets logo, I could print one off the printer, put that in there, add in a couple of these pucks or swooshes, and then use, these are Jot, so these are Dollar Tree. I could spell out Winnipeg Jets. So I could go... Winnipeg, Jets, and have a logo and have some hockey pucks. So look, that's the other thing to look for with scrapbook paper. If, if you actually found this, I don't even know if it's available, but the idea, it's the idea of it. Find, if you have stickers that you like, find a scrapbook paper background that matches those stickers and you can buy letter stickers from Dollar Tree. The other thing I wanted to note is you don't even have to buy any of this stuff. If you're a sports fan, again, just print off the logo, stick it on the middle of a, your paper, and then just... I know this is like terrible handwriting here, but you know, just draw yourself some letters and cut them out. Oops, I completely screwed that one up. Winnipeg, Winnipeg. Jets. Or you can even write right onto the paper, right? Like you could write, if you have nice writing, not like this messy, yucky, chicken scratch stuff. If you have nice printing, just do it right on the paper. Okay. Okay, so I did want to mention the measurements of the classic Happy Planner cover. I have more than one and I measured a couple of them and they are all relatively the same. So this, I think this one here was 24.8 centimeters, 19.8 centimeters. I am from Canada, so I'm not even sure if I got the inches right, but I think that's how you guys do them. So this one here, so it's... So seven and a half, well, let me get a pen. So, so it's seven and a half, seven and three quarters, and then one more tick. So that would be 13 sixteenths, right? <laughs> so it's one tick after seven and three quarters. You guys are all probably laughing at me, but I, I'm Canadian. We use the metric system. So this is 24 centimeters and nine millimeters. So I, yeah, I totally don't understand the, the six, 13, 16, five eighths, one eighth kind of thing. I think I did it right. But if not, mention it in the comments. So this one here going across is nine. There's nine and three quarters right here. And it's one more tick past nine and three quarters. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Then fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, there's sixteen notches. So it should be thirteen sixteenths. I am ninety-nine point nine percent sure I did that right. <laughs> okay, just the last couple things. So I had recommended putting the washi tape on the cardstock paper 
to strengthen it. However, I didn't say anything about the file folders. I personally would probably put the washi tape on here because it is cardboard and as you pull it up and put it back in, it it is going to get uh, weaker, it's going to get softer and eventually it'll it will look like worn out and in this case look at this one this one's split so um i do suggest the file folders putting the tape on it however i think i paid like a dollar to get the three i think the three colors or the three file folders were like a dollar so in that case, I'm not terribly concerned. I will put this in once, pull it out once, and then put a different one in. So I would only probably use this once a year. So that's my other thought on that. If, if you don't want to do the washi tape and you have the cardstock, again, you put it in once, and you pull it up once a year, in this case for Halloween, right? That is what I do. So let's say you start off with and want to do a cover for the four seasons. So you have your spring one, your summer one, your fall one, and your winter one. Well, you're only going to use them once a year. However, let's say you have your winter one on and all of a sudden you want to make a Halloween one. So you're pulling your winter one on, putting your Halloween one on for a couple weeks, then putting your winter one back on. And then, oh, I'm going to make a Christmas one. Take your winter one off, put your Christmas one off on, take the Christmas one off, put the winter one back on for January. So you are going to be pulling it off more and more and more. So just remember that. If you're only going to be pulling it off once a year, you probably don't need to use the washi tape. However, I do suggest using the washi tape if you are going to be pulling your planner cover off and on uh, quite a few times. Okay, so I think that was everything. I went through my list and I covered my list. And by any means, if anyone has any other comments, if you if I've missed something, please, please let me know in the comments. Let everybody know in the comments. And please subscribe. I am going to be doing some more tips and tricks. There are even more ways of making planner covers that I'm going to look into. I'm also doing my weekly plan with me every week and my flip throughs. So please subscribe to Lisa P crafts and hit notifications. So you don't miss anything and have an absolutely wonderful day. Bye bye for now.